So in this video, I will show you how to create this sort of animation that usually you might see in Aman Katsi style videos. So once again, let's just see the animation. So this is the animation, as you can see, very simple. And I'm going to show you how to create this in DaVinci Resolve. So let's head over to DaVinci Resolve where I have created something similar. And let me just play this for you. So here you can see something quite similar to what you just saw. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first of all, drag in your Fusion composition and head over to the Fusion page. And here you can add this background. And now we need to create the outline. First of all, let's select the rectangle and the background and connect the rectangle to the background. And in the background, I'm going to change this to white color and connect this to the background. And over in the rectangle, I'm just going to unselect the solid and change this to 0 0.05. Let's also change the width and the height. So I'm just going to change the height like this and the width as well. And you can also enable the guides from here. And now let's go over to the background. And over here, I'm just going to select gradient. And in the gradient, I'm just going to change these. Or you can say I'm just going to swip, flip these like this. And let's go over to offset and change this a little bit like this. All right, so now let's add a text node. Connect this to the merge. And over here, let's just say 100k per month. And I'm going to use pop-ins as the font for this. So let's just place this over here. And let's also add a line over here. So for this, you can simply drag in a background, have a white color, and then a polygon line. So make sure that this is removed. No more keyframes over here. Connect this to the background and start creating this shape. So I'm going to be using this as the guide for this. Just a straight line. And now let's go ahead and change the border width to 0 0.05 as well and connect this to the verge 2. Okay, so over here, as you can see, it looks a little bit heavy. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.03. And once again, I'm going to go over to the background and then create a gradient for this. But this time I'm going to change this to radial. And let me just remove the guides for now. Let's see how this looks. And let's change the position. So you can zoom out and then change these positions from here like this so that this is dark in the center and then light on the sides like this. Okay, and now let's add a ellipse over here. So in the background, I'm going to change this to white ellipse. I'm going to right click over here at width, select expression, and then connect this to height, and then change this so that this is according to our line over here, and then connect this ellipse to background and the background to the merge. But in the ellipse, I'm going to also unselect solid and then change this to 0 0.03. And once again, you can go ahead and adjust this so that this is smaller. And now you can also change the color a little bit so that this matches the line that we have as well. Okay, I'm now going to add another text and this will be the dollar sign that we saw like this. Once again, using pop-ins as the font. Okay, and now let's add in that counter in the in this area over here. And that is quite simple. All you need to do is once again, drag in your text and write. Uh, we were starting from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And I'm going to use the same font. Let's just connect this to the merge. And now here you see, this is how it looks. Let's just move this down. But over here, what you need to do is add a mask. So I'm going to add this rectangle and connect it to the text. And now what you can do is just simply resize this accordingly, change the height as well as the width. And now I'm going to position the text, so 15 right here, so that this, this is in the center. 
And let's go over to the rectangle and change the soft edges. So something around 0 0.02. Or let's just, and we'll also change the width a little bit more so that this is not quite visible. The sides are not quite visible. And this looks quite okay. And once again, I'm just going to change the softness a little bit more and change the width once again like this and this looks okay all right then uh now what you need to do is create the animations so let's start creating our animations so first of all we have that outline over here that was animating and this is quite simple just go over to the first rectangle and over here let's go over to 20 and create a keyframe at height and then over at zero we can change the height to this position somewhere around there okay and if we play this this is how it will look so you can go over to spline and then select your rectangle select the keyframes hit s and then change this slightly and see how this looks And also this side a little bit okay and now let's go over to this rectangle and over here in the settings you can enable the motion blur and then change the quality to 10 and the shutter angle to 360 and this will give you that motion blur effect okay and once we have this animating we also want to reveal the text as this outline is animating so over here at 5 as you can see this is coming in so let's add the mask for our text as well. I'm using this rectangle for this text and let's change the center. So at the center in the rectangle, let's see where this is starting. So this is starting somewhere around here. So I'm going to change the position to this. So let's create a keyframe over here at center and then at then let's move this out as well. So here you can see, but as you can see, we are get, the text is moving faster than the animation of the outline. So what you can do is create keyframes in order to remove this, just like this. And once again, let's create another keyframe, just so that we're in the just so that we are okay with the outline like this so the text is revealing okay now just once more and then it will be okay okay so go over to the rectangle 3 which is this mask over here for the text and in the settings and once again just select motion blur and set the quality to 10 and shutter angle to 360. And here you will see, you also get a good animation for the text as well. And now let's animate this counter over here as well. So for this counter over here, we already have a mask. And what we can do is just use that. So over here at 10, let's go over to rectangle 2 and create a keyframe at center. And then over at, let's say, 5, we can just move this out. So here you will see, we get that good animation. And then we can also add a motion blur for this as well. So let's see. OK, and this looks interesting now. It looks like the animation that we saw. And now for the counter, we need to animate the counter. So just select your text 3 and then over here at, let's say, 20, create a keyframe at layout, create a keyframe over here, and then the keyframe at 40. Once again, create a keyframe at center. And this time, let's just move this to 17. And then at 20, let's move this to 14. And if you play this, Right now, it does not look very good. So what you can do is go over to spline, make sure these are unselected. 
only select your text three, which is the text, the counter that we have, and then hit S on the keyboard, and then slightly move this and this as well. And now let's play this and see how this looks. Okay, and this looks nice. And now go back to the text, and once again, we can set the motion blur for this as well. So I'm going to change the quality to 10 and shutter angle just to 35. So let's see. And this looks interesting. All right, so we have the basic animation done. Now all we need is that 3D look. So go over to the last merge node and then add in this image plane. But make sure that this is connected like this and then search for render 3d render and then connect the render to the media out and now go over to image plane and over in the transform just set the z-axis back to where it was so somewhere around here and now what you can do is just go back to your background and then remove this or change the alpha to zero and now you will see that over here we can now set this to set the x-axis y-axis so that this has a 3d looking rotation so somewhere around here we're, i'm just changing the y-axis so like this and if you play this this is how it looks so just like the one that we saw in the video we have that same effect but now you will see that if i go back this is how it looks and of course you can add a dark background once again you can keep the outline you can add another background so right now you can see this is transparent in the inside so all you need to do is add another background and then add another rectangle but this time simply just copy this from here paste this in the base settings also copy the background and paste it as base settings and now connect these two and then connect this background with the merge and over here just go back to the rectangle uh, the mass that we have now and select solid and uh, change the border width to zero and i'll go back to the background but this time instead of the gradient you can create a solid color and change this to black and here you have your animation and now let's go back to the main timeline and over here here you can see we have a nice looking animation just like the one that we saw in that video and this is how simple it is to create these sorts of animations in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.